and there's a ring light in my glasses. That thing there on top of my printer, that's a toothbrush. Me wearing street clothes from the outside world on my bed. <sighs> what is my life? Anywho, welcome back, my lovely human beings. It is I, your friendly neighborhood, they, she. My name is Victoria, but you can call me Vic. Today, I'm here to avoid my life responsibilities and instead chat books, specifically 2023 books. Some of these I've pre-ordered, some of them I've never heard of until this very moment, and I wanted to share them with you. Also, they are quite different than the other lists I've seen around the internet, so allow me, allow me to enlighten you. So the first is August Blue by Deborah Levy. I did end up ordering the American cover months ago before any covers were released. It was just like a gray box. Now that I see the UK cover, I'm like, oh no, why did I do that? Because I have, the, all the other books I have from Levy are the UK editions, except, except for The Man Who Saw Everything. And I feel like that blue would go really good with things I want to know, things I want to know, things I should know, things I could tell you, things I don't want to know. I think that's the title. Oh my gosh. It's late. I can't remember words or how to talk. I'm going to put my glasses back on. I am so sorry. Anyways, it's like a double ganger story, right? Like Catherine versus Elena. I just love the way that Deborah Levy writes. Okay, I'm a huge fangirl. Let's see what it says here on the description. August Blue, a novel, releases June 6, 2023, so this summer. Elsa spends a month in pursuit of this enigmatic twin, a search that mounts to an uncanny, erotic encounter in a summer rainstorm. Hello? Yes. Give me that. I want it. Gosh. And then we have Big Swiss. So, um, Vacuum in the Dark are my first, then I read Pretend I'm Dead. Oh my gosh, Jen Vegan. Years I've been waiting. Years we have been waiting. I was like, Jen Vegan's never gonna write again. She is never gonna write again. We're never gonna get a new book. What is going on? She was like not posting to Instagram and I'm like, Jen, come on, por favor, it's a blur. And then all of a sudden we got the announcement and I again pre-ordered it before we even got a cover. And let me tell you, that cover is nice. Look at her face. I love it. So the other two books were kind of like auto fiction. So it's about a cleaning lady named Mona who like takes pictures in people's houses like with their clothes and in their mansions and in their rooms and like Jen Vegan did that who was also a cleaning lady um, but you know with fiction thrown in there. Pretend I'm Dead is more so about um, Mr. Disgusting and then her going to New Mexico. Mr. Disgusting was her ex-boyfriend who was a junkie and then the second one was about like her next door neighbors and this house where that she cleaned where people were like pooping in places for her to find which also apparently is like a game that used to happen back in the day where like people hid their poop and you had to find it um anyway so big swiss <laughs> i love jen vegan it, her, the writing style is really funny and poignant and good it's 336 pages but when is it published when are you being published can you tell me please um February 7th, so very soon. And the description reads, Greta lives with her friend Sabine in an ancient Dutch farmhouse in Hudson, New York. The house built in 1737 is unrenovated, uninsulated, and full of bees. Greta spends her days transcribing therapy sessions for a sex coach who calls himself Ohm. She becomes infatuated with his newest client a repressed married woman. She affectionately refers to as Big Swiss, since she's tall, stoic, and originally from Switzerland. Greta is fascinated by Big Swiss's refreshing attitude towards trauma. They both have dark histories, but Big Swiss chooses to remain unattached to her suffering, while Greta continues to be tortured by her past. One day, Greta recognizes Big Swiss's voice at the dog park. In a panic, she introduces herself with a fake name. I would not have introduced myself. I would have run the other direction. Are you kidding me? Con confrontation? No, thank you. We have lesbian romance. So, mm -hmm. yes, yes, 
I was about to say a bad word, let's not say bad words anymore on the video, but do it. Do it. I'm trying to curse less. I'm trying to curse less. Okay, this one I heard about from Jen Campbell's video. I did order it because they compared it to bluettes. And I'm just like obsessed with the blue things. And it just sounded pretty. And I think the author is also a poet. And anything written by a poet, you know is going to be good. It's just different. When poets write books, it hits different. So Arrangements in Blue, I did order the UK edition of this one. Not in like the same thing. Also, the UK edition is released first, like a month before, so, yes. Uh, Arrangements in Blue by Amy Key, May 9th, 2023. Arrangements in Blue, it elegantly honors life lived completely by and for oneself. This reminded me of Bluettes, but also a journal of a solitude, of like loneliness. Um, inspired by Joni Mitchell's seminal album Blue, celebrated British poet Amy Key sets out to examine the volatile scales of romantic feeling as she has encountered them, from the low notes of loss and unfulfilled desire, punctuated by sharp, discordant feelings of jealousy and regret. I'm looking forward to it. Some angsty blue vibes, let's go. Alright, then we have another Jane Farshfield. Oh, I am currently collecting. This is called The Asking New and Selected Poems. So some of the poems I may have already read, but like, was it for the new poems? Jane Hirschfield, Buddhist poet. A beautiful selection of work across half a century from an exquisite and essential American poet. The Asking opens with, a new, with new and urgent poems by Jane Hirschfield, in which she faces again the contradictions that have shaped her work. And this has already, again, been pre-ordered by me. Alright, here we have the ones I haven't pre-ordered yet, but like, I feel like it's honorable. So the next is also more poetry. It's called New Life by Anna Bolsevik. Bolsevik? It's a Lambda award-winning poet. And it says, for my birthday, I want a cake revealing the color of my soul. It's just so red velvet. All right, New Life is a book that is Dante-esque in its ability to commune with the dead without becoming fixed in the past. The poems have a distinct sense of non-linear time. I love things about time. I love things about ghosts. Can we talk with the dead? I'm really looking forward to this. This comes out in April. Then we have Eileen Miles. I have a couple Eileen Miles on my shelf, the shelf because of Rebecca from Instagram and Melissa Fibos from Bodywork. So I really want to try this Eileen Miles. I don't own any of her poetry. Is that a lie? No, I own Chelsea Girls and Inferno, but no poetry. So it's a poetry collection. It's a book transfixed by the everyday, the sweet accumulation of birds outside a window, a cup of coffee, and a slice of pizza. That description reminded me of Patti Smith, so I'm like all in. A lesbian writing about daily things like coffee, give it to me. It comes, it's 288 pages and it comes out April, April 18th. Okay, then we have Temper. I just put this in the list because it has a cool cover. So I'm just hoping it's like spicy. I just want some spicy. I don't really care that she's in the Netherlands or being lonely and frustrated. Who cares? Just give me spicy. Um, it's 144 pages and it comes out in April. I might have to wait for like people to talk about it, like review it, and then and then get it. Cause <laughs> bug. Uh, description's a little iffy. Cover looks cute. <laughs> All right, then we have Not One Day. This has already been published. It's just being republished with a different cover, and they're publishing the Kindle version for the first time. So it's by a French author, Anne Garret. Angarette. Je ne sais pas. Je ne parlerai pas français. Uh, très désolé pour mon prononciation. <laughs> 5 to 15 pages. This comes out in May. It's just like vignettes on her lovers and escapades. Like, it, I, I'm thinking it's going to be like a little bit like Annie or No in that tiny book where she talks about this affair that she had. 
that one time. I'm hoping that it's like that with all the affairs she has had and reminiscing in a poetic manner on like her lovers. It says, not one day begins with a maxim. Not one day without a woman. What follows is an intimate, erotic, and sometimes bitter recounting of loves and loves past. Sounds good to me. <laughs> okay, this scent is also a cover by It's So Cool. Again, I love red. I like the collage aspect of it. They sold me with the, it's like totally love scent. Um, supposedly, like, the author was supposed to have a manuscript and then erase the entire manuscript and had to write it all over again. It says it is auto-fictional novel, so auto-fiction, which I like with realistic fiction. Um, she accidentally deleted her manuscript. It's about like the loss, I think it's gonna be about like the endings and like losing things and like surrendering to things. It's also queer. <laughs> 312 pages, April 25th. Okay, then we have foul eulogies so this lady before she kills the chickens gives them like an entire backstory and life and that's just like <laughs> iconic behavior and sounds like something that i would do it just sounds funny i don't know paul embarks on increasingly intricate ways of helping the chickens to self-articulate before their deaths oh self-actualize she's gonna she's gonna these chickens are gonna reach nirvana before they turn into chicken tenders like Let's go. Also, I love green as well. Then we have, oh, I didn't even tell you when that one came out. I'm just really excited and I want to get through all of them. This one comes out in May as well. And it is 176 pages. Then we're into the comic books. So this one was, look at the cover. <laughs> look at the cover. It's this lady putting like her period blood in like a plant. Yes. It's called The Amazing Camel Toe. The Amazing Camel Toe. Hello. On cover and title alone, I, I'm buying this book. It says Constance. Oh, Constance is also the name of a character in the Shirley Jackson book, We Have Always Lived in the Castle. Constance, a modern young illustrator, takes revenge for the thousands of attacks suffered daily by women with a comic of her own titled The Amazing Camel Toe. This comes out in May as well, May 16, 160 pages. Lots of good May books. Okay, then we have an Anna Mouchel. I own an Anna Mouchel. It's on my shelf. It's about Patti Smith. Anna Mouchel's illustrations are beautiful. They are beautiful. And then this is specifically about Alejandra Pizarnik, who I read this year for the first time, Diana Street. So it's like about her life, and I'm looking forward to learning more about her and enjoying Anna Mouchel's drawings. It's in Spanish, pero porque yo hablo español. Está bien. It's called Maldita Alejandra, Una Metamorphosis con Alejandra Pizarne, or Damn Alexandra. That's the English, um, the English title of the book. It comes out in April. Uh, does it have a description? No, it says, En este manual de teoría pizarniquiana, que es a su vez el diario personal de una mujer milenial preocupada por el retrato de la salud, mental y lo que es el al mismo tiempo demasiado demasiadísimo bello bellísimo okay whatever yes <laughs> yes okay this one is about two sleepwalkers um who they like, talk to each other about their sleepwalking i don't know bro it had a cool cover it had a cool title zenith comes out in january I've never slept walk, but I've always thought it was fascinating. I think sleepwalking is fascinating. I've also like never seen it happen in person. I have experienced sleep talking. I've heard people like scream in their sleep or like argue in their sleep. Um, but never walk, so very cool. Also they mentioned Georgia O'Keeffe at some point, so absolutely yes. Absolute no we um somebody stop me. Okay, then we have I Miha. I just love things that are bilingual. This is bilingual. It's coming of age. The illustrations look really, really cute. She like goes to Mexico and like comes to terms with herself. And it's supposed to be heartwarming and family and cute. So yeah, it's about a 16 year old kid. It looks awesome. I'm looking forward to it. And then the last thing 
is not a comic book. It's the journals of Edna St. Vincent Millay. They're also publishing this year, I think, like notebooks of like Kathy Acker, also like journals of Gertrude Stein. They're doing Edna St. Vincent Millay's letters. I don't know. Just very interesting. I love reading people's journals. Um, I don't know anything about Edna St. Vincent Millay except that she was a poet and she liked women. That's all I need to know. Some of the reviews, this does have some reviews on Goodreads. Some were like, oh my god, yes. And others were like, this was kind of boring and tedious because the journals weren't meant to be published. So some of them were just like, about the weather. Um, so a little iffy on that one, but very interesting. And I would like to learn more about Edna St. Vincent Millay. Um, I'm just worried that it's not going to have enough information. And I'm like, maybe like a biography just wanted to let you know that it is happening, it is being published, and it's very cool. Anyways, those are the books. Those are the 2023 books I think sound really freaking cool. I hope you enjoyed this video. It is now 11.46 p.m. We did it. Closing my laptop that I'm literally using as a viewfinder and then saying my goodbyes, which in turn stopped my recording. I literally, ugh, the bug is still here. Probably because I haven't showered yet. I'm disgusting. Um, I literally edited the entire video. My hands are so cold. I'm freezing cold. And I made it to the end and there were no goodbyes. Thank you for sticking around. It is almost 1 a.m. I am so tired. I hope you found a book that you want to read. <sighs> Tell me the books you want to read. Yeah, okay. My teeth hurt. Braces are really uncomfortable. I'm hungry. <laughs> I'm hungry, I'm tired, I'm cold. There's an airplane. Goodbye, humans. Merci beaucoup. Okay, now we can, now we can close the laptop.